Good day everybody, this is Nelka again and one of my clients asked me to explain what is the emergency lighting requirements is. So I decided to create a video tutorial so everybody will know what is this emergency lighting design requirements. So this one, I got this one in the internet and if you want to get a, a PDF copy of this presentation, just go and click the link below or in the description of this video tutorial. So emergency lighting design guide. Step one is to identify the mandatory points of emphasis for the positioning of luminaires. Examples as follows, the final exit, this one. Um, for example, the exit door, the exit signs where you need to go. So to all uh, safety exit signs, you need to um, identify those points and the direction of change for example there is a corner so you need to really identify it and put an exit sign for that area and of course in intersections so if there's an intersection you need to put an emergency luminaire on that area next is um, part of the step one is uh, different levels so you, again like this one if there's a change in the steps or the levels of the floor you need to add one luminaire uh, pointing to that area and then for the stairways of course this is very important because most of the time people are directly going to the fire exit stairs so the stairway should have um, emergency luminaires and of course on the final exits when they get outside the building, they should still have the emergency fitting on the wall so they can easily see what is outside the building. And the other thing is the alarm areas or the first aid and other things like firefighting equipments and first aid. So there should have a dedicated emergency luminaire on that area. Next is step two is to ensure that the exit signs are at the correct format and size. So there are different standards for different uh, countries. Uh, right now what I'm explaining to you is from the CIMSE or European standards or British standards. So you need to identify the requirements from your country. So for example, this one, this is from BS2560 of 1975. It's a very old style and it's, uh, it, has, it has been replaced. And this one with the running man on the door, this is still acceptable but not recommend, recommended anymore. And this is at the bottom is the, the new one. It is the European Science Directive format and this came into force on the, last, uh, on the 1st of April of 1996. So if you are working in um, emergency luminar supplier or you're working with a, a lighting design with an emergency calculation you need to specifically mention or you need to identify in your specification this kind of signage or exit signs so aside from these um, images for the exit sign you should also consider the maximum viewing distance of the fitting so for example in this first picture this is this luminaire is internally illuminated signs so it should be seen from 200 meters but if it's um, externally illuminated then it should be seen on the 100 meters um, far from that place okay and then step three to lo locate emergency luminaires at the following essential areas like for example the escalators it should not be used as an escape route, but requires elimination to protect users when power fails. So this escalator must not be used for uh, emergency exits or em uh, escape route. But because people sometimes are already there during the power down, so at least there's an emergency backup there to assist them to go down slowly and safely on the escalator. And then uh, toilets, so install in all toilets exceeding 8 square meters or where natural light is not present. So for every toilets or every cubicle not exceeding 8 square meters, you should provide a dedicated emergency luminaire. 
and then for the lifts emergency lighting to be provided in all the lifts sometimes it's it's it is included in the lift manufacturer or lift supplier or elevator supplier but if it's not there then you need to add a dedicated emergency luminaire in that uh, lift and then of course control rooms motor generator control and plant rooms for essential safety services so the control rooms should have a dedicated emergency luminaire and then as a continuation hazardous areas Areas of high risk should have eliminated to 10% of normal lighting level or 15 lux, whichever is greater. So there is a minimum of 15 lux or a maximum 15 lux or at least 10% of the normal lighting level. So what are those hazardous areas? So if you are working in the manufacturing facilities, then those are uh, sometimes part of the hazard. Those areas and you should have this 10% or 15 lakhs, whichever is greater. And then for the open areas, open areas with either a particular hazard or an escape route passing through it when larger than 60 square meters. So if it's more than 60 square meters, you should have a dedicated uh, emergency fitting for that uh, open area. And then indoor car parks, covered car parks, specifically escape routes should have a dedicated uh, emergency fitting and then step four when points of emph emphasis and essential areas are covered it is necessary to provide additional luminaires to ensure that the minimum illuminance level of one lux is achieved anywhere on the center line of an escape route a uniformity ratio of 40 to 1 maximum to minimum must be ex exceeded i would say it's like uh, 0 0.04 overall uniformity please note that uk has an, a deviation which continues to allow 0.2 lakhs minimum value for routes that are permanently unobstructed so sometimes uh, they allowed 0.2 instead of one lakhs so this is um, where the escape route must have um, on the next video i will teach you how to do a calculation using Dialux software on how to achieve this um, one lux for escape route. And then step five for open or anti-panic core areas larger than 60 square meters with an escape route passing through them, a minimum lighting level of 0.5 lux should be provided. This exclude a 0.5 meter per meter of the area. This is 0.5 means you can offset the calculation surface on the wall like 0.5 uh, on the next video i will teach you how to do that because it's better to explain it while you're doing in the calculation so yes just just an offset so for the open area 0.5 is the requirement so this is the example of where you will put those emergency fittings and exit side niches so here in the toilet escalators lobby with an open area and then corridors so of uh, offices and then stairs and then there's a, a fire extinguisher here so there's a dedicated lumini, uh, emergency fitting here and also on the exit doors there are this um access access exit signages and emergency fittings okay so to summarize all of this uh yeah you need to Find out those one from the step one, step two, three, four, and five. Uh, the information above is intended as guidance in meeting the design requirements of BS 5266 Part 7 of 1999. It is important to check with the relevant local authority as some may impose additional requirements. And like what I said on the next video, I will teach you how to do a lighting calculation for emergency for corridors open areas and toilets and hazardous facilities and if you want to learn more in depth about emergency lighting design go and enroll in my udemy course at www.udemy.com it's about emergency lighting design techniques i will discuss about this lighting guide 12 from sibse 
So what you will learn on the, in that Udemy course is about this Lighting Guide 12. Okay, so go and check that one. I think it's not published yet because Udemy, Udemy is still uh, checking that one. So go and watch out for that one. Okay, so see you again on the next video. Bye.